Hi, welcome to another session of Thriving Through the Holidays. I'm your host, Tracy Osborne, and with me is Svava Brooks, who is just an absolute sweetheart. Y'all are going to love her. Svava is a survivor of child sexual abuse and the co-founder of a nationwide child sexual abuse prevention and education organization in Iceland. I am not going to try and pronounce the name of it. She is also a certified instructor and facilitator for Darkness to Light Stewards of Children, as well as a certified crisis intervention specialist, a certified positive discipline parent educator, a Bellinet teen support group facilitator, a certified TRE provider, and a trauma recovery coach. <sighs> That's a mouthful. She is a mother of three children and has dedicated her life to ending the cycle of child sexual abuse for education, awareness, and by helping survivors heal and thrive. She is a certified facilitator for ADVANCE, a program created by Connections to restore authentic identity. Every week she writes about healing after trauma on her blog and also leads a discussion forum on child sexual abuse, healing and recovery online in her private Facebook groups and on her YouTube channel. She lives in Portland, Oregon with her family and her two rescue cats. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So nice yeah. to you again. <laughs> Boy. Good to be here with you. I feel under certified listening to or li listing out all your certifications and stuff. I'm like, I need to get busy. <laughs> yes. Well, but here's the thing. I kind of smile when I people read that out and because it really is my healing journey. Yeah. And I think you can relate to that is that, um, you know, and the people that work with me, they will smile too, because they know me, you know, if I find something that I think is going to work for me, I, I, I dive in deep and what better way than, okay, I'm just going to sign up for whatever this is and I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to put down money. I'm going to sign up for being held accountable. Uh, I have to show up. I have to, there's right. no way to back out here. And, and really, um, yeah, hearing you reflect on, you know, my CV, it's like, yep, that's what helped me with that. Yep. That's what helped me with that. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely get it. Um, yeah. I, I've got stacks of books you can't see around me um, to help me, you know, not only with my coaching business, but with my, mostly with my own healing journey. You know, you know, as well as I do, it's ongoing. We're never fully healed. It's, we're a work in progress until, until we're not here anymore you know <laughs> yes yeah and I, th I don't think it's, it's so much about you know healing i think humans are meant to continue to learn and evolve mm -hmm. and so i think when we decide that's it i'm i'm done learning i think that's kind of where we start breaking down okay that you don't have a, a purpose for being here anymore like it's like you know, that's just how I see it. So my drive to learn is, is like, you know, because what I've also found, the more I know, the more I've learned, the less that I feel like I know. I'm like, I know nothing. It's like, oh my gosh. And I think really the trauma healing world, it's very much that because there's truth is there's things that we still don't know oh, yeah. about the mind, about the body, about pain. I mean, some of the greatest challenges that we are faced as humans, we really don't have solid, like, yeah, A, B, C, D, you'll be fixed, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no. And I don't think we ever will. Not for, not for trauma or anything mentally related, because it, it's not something you can just put a Band-Aid on. Yeah, and also because it's, it's so subjective, right? It's like you're honoring your experience your truth and it's going to look very different for the person sitting on the other side of the table and i think sometimes that's the hardest part for humans is to right there isn't the right way no it's all about you exploring it until you find what is your way this is your life your journey and everybody wants to tell you how to how to walk your journey and walk your path and you know like you said this is your journey it's very personal very private 
And that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, your topic is actually healing from the heart, not from the hurt. And I love that because I think for so many of us, we attack this from a place of hurt. And it makes it 10 times harder to heal and to move forward. Yeah. And, and just, just, you know, th that was kind of a shift for me when I was ready to kind of move out from, okay, I know I'm a survivor. I've, I know all the crap that I've been through. And it took me like 10 years to admit that I'd been through stuff, right? Because up into my 25 years old, no, my childhood was fine. I know I'm okay. Right. <laughs> and so it wasn't until I started my healing journey that I was like, and I would see in my groups, I'm a big fan of groups in the people are sitting in my, in the circle with me, their faces, when I was telling them what had happened to me. And I'm like, oh, really? That, I guess that was not okay. Or that was a big deal. Right. And then for like a decade, I dove into, you know, embracing that I was a victim because we can't skip that stage. We can't just move on to survivors because we don't want to feel the pain, the hard stuff, or, or bring into awareness what really happened and like feel the grief of that. It's, right. it's hard. And so it was when I said, okay, I've, I've focused on this for so long. I'm ready to make that shift. I've focused on the hurt and I've been living out of the hurt, feeling, being the victim, but now I'm ready to start living out of my heart. Now that I had finally gotten in touch with what it felt like to love and to love Svava and to like open up to the possibility of being fully seen and heard. I'm like, okay, I want to start living out of that. And that called for a little different practice. And if anything, for me, it was kind of like a lifestyle change because, you know, I, I had this body <laughs> that had done a beautiful job keeping me safe, right? The hard wiring that we don't, we don't get, don't get to ask our body to, if it wants to protect us and disconnect or dissociate or whatever it does, it just does it. And it's always doing what it seeks is the very, very best for us, given the energy and the information and your safety at that time in your life. And so I had done some of the legwork and I was ready to make that shift. And so what does that look like? And so I had a, a mentor at the time who really helped me like connect what that process looked like. I, I'm not a big fan of, I'm just going to tell you how, like, you know, this is what it sounds like. I read a book about it. I, and that's why my CV is what it is. I need a, okay, so what does that look like? I'm in the trenches doing it. And so this beautiful mentor of mine helped me to see the power of my choices, the power of my thinking, the power of my intention, daily intention. What am I choosing? And the thing is, if I'm not aware and grounded in my body and my heart, choosing the life that I want, funneling my energy into that, my body by default will be choosing the easy path, which was the hard wiring. So I get to choose because I'm creating new patterns in my mind and my body, daily practice, daily practice, sometimes, you know, morning practice, afternoon practice, <laughs> because I, I had to be super vigilant about oh, yeah. my thinking and tracing that to my feelings and then tracing it to how my body was feeling. So anyways, that's kind of how that shift came about. Wow. Um I, you definitely, I agree. You have to be hyper vigilant because, you know, those thought patterns create highways on our brain, literally create highways on our brain. And so, you know, you drive somewhere and all of a sudden you're like, I don't remember even driving here, but here I am because you're on autopilot. That's what our thoughts do. And you have to be very conscious of your thoughts for a long time, you know, to recognize, okay. The negative is seeping in. Now it's time to rephrase, reframe, and and bring in some more positive, more loving thoughts. Yes, 
yes i like to i like to use a um like a thought journal and so when those thoughts come in write it down and rephrase it um yeah yeah absolutely we were just talking about that on youtube yesterday (laughs) it's like the topic of discussion it's like you know and then for some of us we don't even hear those those negative thoughts it's like they've been such a big part of our life that they kind of like they they ma- they kind of happen right under our eyeballs like just kind of here in the background and we've turned on we don't even hear that voice but yet we can feel the impact of it and it isn't so much even the words but how we say them to ourselves right the tone that we use we are so freaking brutal with ourselves and sometimes it's the the voice of our you know the parent or the protector or the person that hurt us and again, we've just kind of like, oh, we're, and we're doing this and all day long, we are just like, ah, oh, right? And so turning up the volume a little bit, it's like, okay, I'm willing to, to hear it because I wanted to understand why was it that I felt like so low all the time and following my body because the body, like 80% of our messages in the body are coming from the body to the mind right? It's, it's the state of how you're feeling is, right? Your mind is like, something's wrong, something's wrong. And we're getting the signal from the body. Something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. Oh, you must have done something wrong. Oh, remember, you're bad. Oh, remember, you shouldn't expect too much or right. So the mind is constantly translating what the signals are coming from the body. So coming into the body, slowing things down enough. And like you said, have a thought journal. It's like, where is this craziness coming from? Mm-hmm. You know, this is, these are not like, oh yeah, I remember my stepdad saying that to me, or I remember an old boyfriend used to call me that, or yeah, that bullying in high school. It's like, they come from somewhere. Yeah. But then we just deeply connect to them and we start to believe them. And then it's like, we are the ones right? Oh my gosh. The things that we say to ourselves can, can be far worse than anything that's been said to us in our past. Now I'm not making yes. light of anybody's past by any stretch of the imagination because I've had some horrible things said to me, but the stuff that I say to myself on a daily basis, it's almost like I have taken what the abuser, where they left off and escalated it you know and it's yeah it, just do a you know do a conscious exercise and just you know kind of sit there and start thinking about some negative thoughts you know i am i'm not worthy i am horrible i screw up all the time and pay attention to how your body feels all of a sudden you're tense you know you may be feeling nauseous or something like that And then change those thoughts around and I am amazing. I am incredible. I am, you know, phenomenal. And your body will relax and and you can notice the physical change because like you said, it comes from our body. Yes. Our our body, the body doesn't lie. Hold everything in. Yes, exactly. As we know, the body doesn't lie. And the body is is your histo- you know historical record mm-hmm. of of what you've been through. So, and just reflecting on our conversation in my group yesterday, you know, some people said, "Well, yeah, I can turn these around," but I don't believe it. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, and I that's it. <laughs> well, and and that's that's a crucial point because right and this is where i again we're sharing like i'm holding up my hands it's like you gotta really want it you gotta really want to and and the part of you who keeps bringing up the historical you know of this isn't true because see i i know you're not good because remember that right so whether it's your body or your inner child your inner critic. It's like, it's like I said, becoming the parent and the protector that I needed created like that mama bear energy in me for myself and all my parts that when 
anything from the past gets brought up, I will go to kindness. And it's like, you know, no, I understand why you don't believe it. Yeah, I understand. I remember I was there. But hey, sweet one, right? I believe I know for a fact that you are kind and generous and loving and always doing your best. Right. And I do that with the feeling, the warmth, the tenderness in my voice for myself and my parts. That's the piece that we often miss. We can't just, yeah, I'm good, 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 I'm good. Right. It's like that doesn't work. It's like connected to an emotion. Really feel it. That makes me want to up actually because I'm connecting to it. <laughs> yes. And, and bingo, Tracy, this is it. This is often why we skip that part. Because when we turn to ourselves with kindness, sometimes there are some hurt. There's hurt oh, yeah. that needs to be felt. And so our automatic, right, is, oh, it's too big. I don't want to. I don't want to. So, yeah. Yeah. No, you've got to let it, got to let it go. Got to let it release the, release the hurt and embrace the love. Yes. Now, for the few minutes that we've got left, how do we, how can we turn this to the upcoming holidays? Because that's what this whole thing is about, right? Is yep. How yep. are we going to get through the holiday season, which is, usually such a big trigger for so many of us so how do you turn this love and coming from the heart towards you know maybe those family gatherings where we have to be around those who wronged us well i have a handful of suggestions um the first one is um basically start with yourself in terms of taking care of you because sometimes the holidays are so much, it's about giving and being generous and, you know, going out of our way for other people. And we definitely have some interesting circumstances going on in the world right now, which maybe for some of us uh, are, are an easy out of a gathering that in the first place we didn't want to go to. So yay. Be a blessing. <laughs> no, yeah. it. Exactly. Thanks. You know, exactly. So we can say, well, I think I might have been exposed here. So I just don't want to, you know, risk anybody or exposing anybody. I'm just going to stay home this holiday season or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm all for bowing out as, as graciously as you can, whatever you need to say for you. Right. But also, yeah, don't skimp on your self-care, right? Take care of your body. Take care of your nervous system. Fill this cup first. You know, if you write out your list of what to do, make sure you are in the top five. Me, 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 me. And then everybody else, because you have your body, right? You need to move your body, tend to your feelings, tend to your inner child make sure you're eating right maybe do some art or dancing um really fill yourself up because when we fill ourselves up and we come into a space where maybe there are some people pulling on us or trigger us we have more bandwidth to handle uh or even like um no i'm sorry i don't treat myself that way anymore so i'm certainly not going to put up with that from you right um, but I think that's the most important part. And also everybody, everywhere. I always come from the benefit of the doubt. This is the eternal optimist that I am. I always like to assume that people are doing the best they can. So when someone in front of me is a little crappy or on their edge, I, instead of assuming I did something wrong or I'm at fault here, I will, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe Ooh. there's something going on in their world that maybe they haven't gotten support with or felt safe to, to, to process or talk about. Uh, and especially right now, we are very close to the tipping or the overwhelm line a lot. Yeah. So give ourselves a lot of grace. And my favorite tool here, placing my hand on my heart. And I can do this in meetings. I can do this when I'm sitting around the table with other people. 
But to me, when I place my hand on my heart, I've done this enough that my body is like, oh, she's recognizing that my spine is tensing up a little bit. We're starting to feel a little worried, maybe a little uncomfortable, a lot of energy flying in this room. But the minute I place my hand on my heart and my body knows I'm here for you, my friend. I hear you, I see you, I feel you. And those shoulders drop. And I feel more grounded. I like that. Oh. Oh, wow. That's that's that right there is a very powerful tool. And that is something you can do anywhere. Nobody's gonna really say anything if you've got your hand just sitting right here. You're like, okay, whatever. I mean, I do yeah. all the time, you know. Yeah, and, and you can even do it by placing one hand on top of another in your lap, or you can whatever grab you your want. elbows. Yeah, just exactly. Whatever, whatever yeah. you need to signal to your body that that you're yeah. And, and another thing I do a lot, I brought this, I carry little heart rocks in my pockets sometimes. Oh, nice. Okay. And, and then, you know, if you have a crystal or something that helps you to just to stay connected and grounded, then I hold on to it. I'll bring it out and just play with it. I'm there you nice. go. <laughs> yep. I'll just, there I don't know go. if I wear the bracelet, but I keep it right here because this is my stress point is in my desk, you know? That's my biggest stress point. So I'll just keep it here and I'll play with it. I might put it on my wrist for a little bit and I'll take it off. And, but turquoise, turquoise is my, my calming stone. So yeah. Beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been an absolute pleasure. Of I course. Love Thank, Thank you, you for having me. No, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just have all these feels right now. <laughs> all these feels are coming to the surface so i'm mm, little... i'm i'm sorry i tend to do that for people <laughs> no don't apologize no it. i know i know i know, know. I'm I sure know. That yeah. our listeners are having a lot of feels happening right now too so definitely make sure you take care of yourself sit in, in some quiet for a little bit and ground yourself um you know and let those feels out let the emotions out i'm probably gonna have a good cry after this <laughs> but it's a good, a good cry exactly yes exactly that is a good cry yes but exactly. thank you for tuning in thank you for joining us for this amazing event this has been a, a fabulous event and i'm just having a ball talking to everybody so thank you Swava. thank you listeners we will talk to you in the next session